All right, it's been a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months coming, but finally I'm going to reveal to you a lot of detail about this conversational compass that I've been working on for you know, years. I've been coaching, I'm Alex Social, the Four Week Natural Head Coach, and I've been working on this stuff since 2007. And so the question that everybody wants to know is how to talk to girls, how to start a conversation, what makes the conversation work, and that's exactly what this blog, this video blog is gonna be all about. So we're gonna go a little bit in depth, all right? We've got the screen here, uh, we've got the whiteboard, I've got some markers, um, and as you can see from the other camera here, we've got a whole lot to talk about. So, let me try to kind of break it down. Now, th this channel is for guys who wanna be really good at talking to girls, take control of their dating life and understand how the social dynamics work. Well, all that I've done is coached social dynamics for uh, 16 years as of this year, since 2007, all the way up now until 2022. Maybe that's 17 inclusive, I don't know, 15 inclusive, I don't know the math. But here's how you kind of break it down, okay? Now, when, you know, when we have conversations, we can kind of break it down into positive themes, negative themes, serious topics, and silly topics, creative versus factual, positive, optimistic stuff versus negative, challenging, uh, uh, unhappy kind of stuff, which can be either playful or serious. Now, we kind of break it up into these quadrants just to, to make it a little bit easier to map. Positive, silly, that's everything here. Positive, silly, the playful stuff. Positive, serious, which is the genuine stuff. Serious, negative, which are the confrontational, vulnerability, empathy, things like that. And then silly, negative, which is self-deprecation, teasing, uh, uh, challenging, playful challenging, stuff like that. Now, not only is it positive, negative, silly, and serious, we can also break this down into questions and statements. So are you gonna do a positive, serious question or statement, um, positive, silly question or statement, and then is it going to be about you or her? All right, so the trick, here's what you need to know. The trick to being good at conversation and talking to people, to be an interesting person, to be an attractive person, to be, to be better than the competition, is that you can have variety, that you have variety in your conversation. What we have in the middle here are how extreme your conversation is. So safe in these different quadrants are generally boring, non-risky topics. The thing that's gonna make you a conversational star is if you can go into the edgy zone, okay? These are things that, it takes a risk. It's a risk to say these things socially. You might be judged uh, and, and you might risk embarrassing yourself if you go into the edgy zone. Beyond that, we have over the top and extreme, okay? So over the top you don't really need, but extreme you can use. However, when you really have rapport with somebody, with a friend, with a coworker, or with, for example, uh, a girl that you're getting to know, then you can start going over the top with the ex how extreme your content is gonna be. So over the top and then, and then extreme is truly extreme. In the context of how to talk to girls and how to make a pickup work, the, the big problem that most of you guys are getting into is the safe, you're just in the safe zone of conversation. So the safe zone of conversation is asking boring questions, um, being predictable, being repetitive, and never taking a risk. So where are you from, what are you doing? Talking about crypto, like positive, serious, safe. You're normally just in the safe zone. The reason why most guys stay in the safe zone is because if they go into the edgy zone, if they go into these lists of things that I have out here, that's when you start risking rejection. But I wanna make this crystal clear deep into the camera that if you are only in the safe zone, attraction cannot work. You cannot get attraction, you cannot have game, you cannot create any interest in the girl that you're talking to. She, she's not gonna get excited at all because you're not taking any, any risks. So imagine, you know, if you go up and you have the conversation and maybe, you know, you, you go to the gym, you make a lot of money, you're, you're naturally good looking, but you're boring as batshit because you only talk about facts 
And when you do make a joke, like a, a positive silly, it's like, yeah, we'll have an affair one day, a really, you know, generic safe joke. Or, you know, you and me are gonna get married with Elvis in Vegas, yeah. Something, what's a generic silly negative, a very bland joke, it's like, we would not get along, ha <laughs> ha. And the problem is, when you use the safe negatives, that, that's what's called being too cute. So if you use a joke like, oh my God, we would never get along, it's called being too cute because if you, if you use a joke like that, then uh, the girl has to laugh and you're using a joke that's so safe that she has to laugh. Um, and the girl knows that you're using that uh, psychological dynamic so that you can trigger her to laugh, but you're doing it in a safe zone, okay? There's no creativity here. You're basically just referencing pop culture in a boring and predictable, very lame kind of way. Um, we'll get to this quadrant in a second, but th as I said, the big problem is most of you guys are only in a safe zone. Safe jokes, safe teasers, uh, and safe um, serious stuff, just matter of fact stuff. The next big mistake that everyone's making is that you generally only do questions. You only ask questions. Where are you from? What are you doing? What are you into? Do you have crypto? I'm basically teasing all the crypto guys here. What are you wearing to Coachella? Do you like Coachella? Whatever, right? So you're stuck only doing questions. And the other thing is you're stuck only talking about her. About her. So you're basically barraging them. Now, put yourself into the girl's position. Imagine, imagine, I always explain this to my students on Four Week Natural, and we actually do Four Week Natural in this conference room here, and I explain all of this, we do role plays, we go over it, and then I help you do it in field and help to prompt you on dates and day game. But the thing is, imagine if you were, if you were sitting uh, you know, on a flight, and you sit down, you're in first class, you get, you get upgraded, and then a homosexual guy, he comes in, he sits down next to you, and he starts gaming you, what you're probably gonna hear when you're sitting there in your airplane seat is this, this homosexual guy who's probably pretty clearly interested in you, just asking you question after question after question, sometimes making little jokes, sometimes teasing. He's trying to create rapport and interest out of nothing. And you're gonna know that and you're just gonna shut him down. There's gonna be a dead end. The problem is, in the same way that girls sometimes give you the phone number when they don't really mean it, you might give someone who's hitting on you a phone number just to almost to shut things down, to, to give them a sense of achievement, but then you maybe block or delete that phone number after the fact. And that happens a lot with, with guys who are going out trying to make this work. You know, guys in the pickup community, they're trying to make this work and they, they do get some numbers, they do get some engagement, but they actually don't get results. Now, the next problem, and the, the, I coach guys on a four week, five week program, okay, all around the world. And coming up, Croatia's coming up, two in Croatia, uh, uh, Helsinki, we're going back to Finland, New York is coming up, London is coming up, and then we're gonna go back uh, to a holiday destination in January, but uh, we haven't confirmed that one yet. But the problem is I do get guys who can be a little bit more edgy and expressive than safe, they can do things other than only talking about her or asking questions. But what the guys then tend to do is they only do silly. They're only silly. So a lot of teasers and a lot of, basically just a lot of teasers, like you're deplorable, I will cancel you. Um, uh, you're not my type, I would never marry you. My mum is never gonna like you. And that can get laughs, but it's very one dimensional. The other thing is playful compliments and role plays. In fact, I should even add that to the board here, the role play, if the pen works. So it's a role play. So one of my guys at the moment, he, he does role play too much, okay? And that's fine. So you can, you can use role plays a little bit, sparingly, but it's not the whole picture. So what needs to happen? Well, and the other thing that I wanna point out is if a guy is only uh, is only silly, other types of guys can only be serious, okay? And, and they might, you know, I, I imagine my German guys, they're like, I, compliments, I like you, call to action, let's go to the bar and get a drink, let's go drinking, let's go dancing. But there's no humor or creativity or 
anything really interesting happening with those guys. So it's, it's one thing to develop your, your confidence and your ballsiness to be able to approach girls, ask to drink and ask to dance, but all of this lacks imagination. And the thing is, I think, you know, like if a guy can be imaginative, playful and creative, that says a lot about the kind of person that he is, uh, how fun he can be and that he has his whole life in order uh, and running smoothly, he's got a good sense of abundance, so he does actually want to have some fun. So, <clears throat> rarely do I get guys who are all positive and no negative, right? So that's like the, the positive side and the negative side. But the guys who are only positive, they are they tend to be extremely agreeable, always playful, always agreeable, complimenting, that's awesome, well done, yeah, sure, okay, yeah. Those types of guys, right? The answer here, and all of these things are actually pretty easy to do in isolation. The answer here is to start combining combinations of things, right? So if you wanna do something silly like a tease, then you need to counterbalance that with a compliment. If you're gonna do um, a crazy role play, you can then counterbalance that with a personal boundary. So. Imagine this, right, like, let's, let's kind of do like a comparison, okay? So imagine you have this guy here and he does the kind of pickup where he says, uh, oh my God, nice to meet you, we'll get along so well. Um, you, you're the Vegas princess joke, we should get married in Vegas, I can see it now, we're gonna be so drunk, that's awesome, let's get super drunk, can I have your phone number? It's, it's all that kind of thing, right? What you need to have happen is you might do something playful but then challenge it. So you might say, oh my God, you're a babe, you're a superstar, you're, you're breaking every man's heart in this place, that's a big playful compliment. And then immediately follow that up with the range of emotions you say, um, but I'm not the Salvation Army, you can't take advantage of me. And that would be personal boundary, almost like a playful tease, like you can't take advantage of me. So when you hit the positive and the negative, or if you said something like, oh my God, you're a queen, but I better be on the gold digger alert. So you hit that one as well, then the girl gets super excited, okay? She thinks this guy has variety of personality. He is interesting. Now, where, like, to become interesting to begin with, if you have either, if you have so much abundance in life that generally other people are not interesting to you, you need to make things interesting for yourself. So you become theatrical. You become an incredible host of conversation because you kind of wanna lead somebody to believe one thing and then you wanna hit them with something else, just like telling a joke. You know that if you tease someone, you're gonna say something like, uh, I always have to be very careful about what I say on the internet, but if you're gonna to say to the girl like, oh my God, you should be canceled, you're horrible, right? That's a tease and it's you know referencing pop culture. If you're gonna say that, we know that people are gonna to react to that, it's gonna be kind of funny and interesting but you might wanna counterbalance that with first introducing yourself. Hey, my name's John, I've got a very boring job, I work with computers, and for what I've just learned about you, you should be canceled and booted out of this venue, right? So pretty safe and pretty positive, almost boring, and then you hit it with something funny and silly. This is the, the key to success. This is the key to success. And I, it's so easy to say, here's a great, uh, rapport technique or here are some great powerful compliments like you make so many sacrifices, you're so hard working, but that doesn't work on its own. It needs to be counterbalanced, okay? So you can give a girl a whole lot of qualifications. You're, you know, you're hard working, you, you make a lot of sacrifices to get to where you are, you would be a great friend. Um, I really like you. You can give that compliment, you can call to action. I really like you, you can do all of that serious stuff, but then you can also do the negative. You can say, but I don't go out very often and honestly, I'm super picky um, and I don't know what I want. I'm easily distracted. So you can declare that's called an over demonstration fear of loss, okay? O-D-F-O-L and credit to Ali for basically articulating that one. So you see how when we start to counterbalance, when we combine these things together in, what do you call them? Like a kind of a stack, like a stack of things. 
then you start to make yourself an interesting person. Let's look at some other ones, okay? Just so you're starting to get the idea, then we'll talk about extremities. So imagine, you know, uh, imagine you go up to the girl and you're a serious kind of guy. Uh, imagine, I imagine like a farm guy, right? Because I get a lot of guys from, from, you know, regional areas coming into the city to do these programs. And that guy, he can go up, he can introduce himself and say, hey, my name's Jordan, I'm from the country. Um, I, I'm a pretty straightforward kind of guy. I, I'm a farmer, I'd like to buy you a drink. And then if the guy goes into some negatives, right? These negatives, like, I know that I might be interrupting you. I know that this might be girls night. That's a negative. That's talking about her sensitivity, her defensiveness. And then he says vulnerability. He says, I'm actually super scared. I'm shaking in my knees to talk to you, but I'm doing it anyway. So using the positive and the negative, it's all serious stuff, but positive and the negative in that kind of combination works really well. You can even then empower that more. You can say, I'm Jordan, I'm from the farm, from Northern Canada. I'm super nervous to talk to you because I know it's girls night and you know these are high stakes. Then you can then you can go back to that and say, oh my God, you've got a sense of humor, this is great. So you, as you start putting these things together, you can build up a, a precedent of the conversation and then quickly shift gears, get an incredible laugh and you, you, immediately the girl is gonna think, oh my God, pay attention, this is an interesting guy, anything is possible to come out of his mouth next, I love this, I can have mental, it's like mental masturbation for the girl to actually have a guy to banter with. Girls, I think a big part of female psychology in the social and dating game is to remain a little bit unpredictable because predictability is so boring. Because if there is unpredictability, and remember, in the dating game, people are very, people are chasing instant, instant gratitude a lot of the time. So they can do unpredictable, disloyal, um, negative things. So that becomes the norm, right? That kind of intensity, that kind of unpredictability becomes the norm. So if you're gonna be running conversation, you need to create unpredictability in your conversation. So now we're understanding that I'm gonna go through each of these things and explain how they work and, and how you can kind of stack them together and then give you some, some key examples of how to do it explicitly so it works. And if you can see over here, we've got the other stack. I'll break that down because that will give you something really to work with that's gonna make your approach game work, okay? And this is, by the way, I should mention that this is very much live in person type of stuff rather than Tinder and text game. That's a whole different thing. We've got an online program called Day Game Phone Game where I go through many, many examples and the breakdowns and how that works. So yeah, anyway. Now, I said in the beginning that a lot of guys fall into the safe zone and that is limited. It's boring conversation and we all know boring people who whenever you talk to them, it's gonna be predictable, repetitive, not great. So. You, we wanna go now into the edgy zone, okay? The edgy zone, and these are all examples of edgy types of things, not quite over the top, but edgy types of things. Whenever you say something edgy, you risk embarrassing yourself. You give other people justification to judge you negatively or to walk away from you, and that obviously takes some balls, or a sense of abundance. Now, the, the functional thing is that if you can say something that's a bit risky, edgy, that people may judge you for, it shows that you're abundant and you don't mind if you rub some people the wrong way. You are polarizing in that sense. The reason why this is so attractive to women or why a girl or, or a woman will, will immediately categorize you as a attractive type of guy is she sees that you are the kind of person who has a sense of abundance and can afford to rub people the wrong way, uh, maybe polarize people because you know that you can go and create other options if you need to. So if you can talk that way, you become a certain type of person. But most of my students, they can talk, they can compliment, they can ask questions, they can do little role plays, but it's generally very safe because if you're just learning game, generally you've come from a place of scarcity and you want to become abundant, but to become abundant, to become attractive, you need to risk losing options. And that's a kind of a leap of faith that you need to take. So in the, the learning process, 
risk losing options by saying more colorful things, by being more edgy, and if you do that, then you're gonna be categorized in a certain way, but the problem is you're going to get tests. And again, that's what this is about here. If you can see here on camera number two, that's the test part over there. We'll get into that in a second. So, okay. With this type of conversation, yes, you will get tests. Tests is banter. And if you've ever looked at a, you know, Tinder, girls say, I love banter. I love a guy with banter. And a ban banter, back and forth is generally verbal wrestling, verbal jousting, where you can challenge each other. And what this boils back down to is that you are a guy who can be interesting, who can take risks, risks who does have a sense of abundant, abundance. And the catch phrase that you wanna write down from this video is that a woman wants to be chosen by a man with choice. And that man with choice, he can be poor, he can be good looking, he can be uh, young, he can be old, he can be alternative, he can be mainstream, but a man with choice, a, a man who can create choice. Because remember, women are much more community-minded, much more uh, no, empathetic than guys, so their sense of self is, is much more relevant to their community than what a guy's sense of self is. Right? Girls are very, very aware of their place in the community, their role they play in the community, how meaningful they are in their own community. So a woman wants to be chosen and, and be, uh, get positive attention from a man with choice, and that's fair enough. You, know, you want to be with a woman who's attractive and popular, she wants to be chosen by a guy who has choice, who is attractive and popular as well. How do you do that? Having an ability to create options. How do you have an ability to create options? Be interesting conversationally, how do you be interesting conversationally? Know how to use a range of emotions and do it in an edgy way. So, the, the tangible examples, let's begin. In, uh, even before I go into all the tangible examples, I'm gonna, I wanna make a big point here. When you start conversations with other people, it's easier uh, to take a risk by talking about yourself. So talking about you. And in each of these quadrants, we generally have things that are either about you, about, about yourself, or about the girl, okay? So, if I go around the list, around the, the circle here, self-aggrandizing, positive, silly, self-aggrandizing, that's playful bullshit talk about yourself. Like, I'm a genius, I'm a Formula One driver, I've got an incredible IQ, I'm in Mensa. And I should make a point here, anything positive, silly, you need to speak with exaggeration and emphasis, okay? If you say these things in a matter-of-fact kind of way, emphasis, emphasis. If you say those things in a matter-of-fact kind of way, you're gonna come across as a douchebag or boring. So for example, if you say, I'm a genius, I'm a genius, or I've got a lot of money, right? If you say it in a, in a matter of fact kind of way, people are gonna think that you, you mean it and they're gonna think you're an idiot. So instead, you wanna really self-aggrandize and say, don't worry, I'm rich, you know, dollar bills. Playful, playfully express yourself and over-exaggerate it. But in the positive silly, if you self-aggrandize, that's a you type thing. In the silly negative, if you self-deprecate, that's a you type thing, okay? You rather than her. In serious, demonstration fear of loss, vulnerability, that's a you type thing. Personal boundaries is a you type thing. Challenging would be a her type thing. Empathy is a her type thing. Uh, creating a fear of loss. That, that's a kind of a 50-50. And then over here, introducing yourself is about you. Um, rapport, sharing yourself, like telling stories about yourself to, to connect with somebody, that's about you. So these ones that I've, I've just marked in green here, you can be a really good conversationalist and minimize risk by just sharing yourself. Now go back to the airplane example. If you're sitting next to a gay guy on the plane, that guy can actually conversationally seduce you. As I was saying, that guy can actually conversationally seduce you. Imagine if that guy's just sitting on the flight next to you and he starts telling his story, right? And he says, I'm off on holidays. Oh, by the way, my name is Marcus. I'm from here, I do this job, I love it. And you're just sitting there. You don't even need to actively participate. And this kind of charismatic, positive vibe person just starts telling their story. And I'm planning on going here, I'm from here. So you're, you're taking all of this in and 
from the user's point of view, from the listener's point of view, nothing is required, but it is gonna get into your ears nonetheless, right? So as this guy tells his story, he might even be a little bit funny. He's like, oh, I'm sure I'm gonna win the, 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 the most handsome man in the resort award. That would be self-aggrandizing. Then a bit of self-deprecation. He might say things like, oh, I'm probably gonna get super drunk and maybe get arrested, but you know, that makes for a good holiday, right? And then he's like, you know, I, I went too far last time and I need to say no, I need to you know, do more constructive things with my time. And you are just gonna be listening and taking all of this in, but you're gonna form a super clear picture of who this person is in the same way that you might you know, scroll on Instagram or Facebook or any, any of these content platforms and you might become a fan of different people just by scrolling and looking at their content. It's not that they need to interrogate you for you to get to know them, just by them offering themselves, you get to know them and then you get bought in. Seduction, the way that we use it, the way that we describe it is that somebody takes you from your original intention and brings them onto your intention. And that can be a positive thing. If you wanna show somebody a good time, um, host them, encourage them, bring the best out of them, Seduction is a great thing, but it, it also has a very negative connotation because you know you could be saying, you know, I want to take somebody from their original intention and then be with me, but that you, you a lot of men out there in the world are not win-win thinkers when they're thinking about seduction. Unfortunately, a lot of guys they may want to prove something to themselves with intimacy, uh, which is easily sensed by women easily sensed by girls and, and easily defended and it has no place in society and people are more self-conscious of that than ever before. But back to, back to seduction. Imagine you know, if you're talking to a girl and you're using a nice range of emotions, right? You introduce yourself, offer some rapport, self-deprecate a little bit, just say, oh, I'm the biggest loser in the club or I'm, I'm, I work with computers, I'm a total geek, you're gonna hate me bit of silly stuff, bit of positive stuff, um, and vulnerability, say, oh my God, you're making me so nervous, you're destroying me, <laughs> what you're doing to me is unfair. All of that stuff, you can share only your side of the conversation so that she can actually get a really clear impression of you. And so many guys miss this. You can almost do the entire pickup only talking about yourself, and that can be enough to be honest, right? However, a recent concept, right? And this is like one of the pinnacles of this, this new program that we just put out called Conversation Casanova, which is all of this, like 20 hours about all of this, so you can just download it into your head and then have excellent game immediately, excellent cold approach game. All of my 16 years of studying and teaching all imported into your head. What you do, we call this the crack. Right? So imagine you're talking to a girl and she's not that responsive or so imagine she's listening to you, she's not that responsive or you know, maybe a lot of girls actually get uh, very shy, they get quiet and attentive when they like what's going on in a social interaction but they, they sometimes think, oh shit, I don't wanna embarrass myself, I don't wanna mess this up, I really like this guy. Well, <laughs> from your, if you're kind of hosting the conversation, then you can go into the, the realm of talking about her. And that can be a question or it can be a statement or it can be an assumption. So um, imagine you know, you're, you're sharing yourself, you're introducing yourself, you're a little bit playful, and then you can challenge her in a playful way with a tease or a role play or an accusation. And I think accusations are generally positive, silly. So you would say, one, one example might be, uh, I bet you're a gold digger. So imagine you've been very kind of matter of fact around the whole, the whole time. And then you say, oh, so uh, clearly you're a gold digger accepting a drink from me. Now, this is an exaggeration. It's playful. Don't take it out of context. And the girl's going to then take that and say, where, like, where did that come from? This tease or this accusation. And that generally triggers her to, to react and then challenge you back. And she might, if she likes what's happening, she's going to say something like, I'm a gold digger. You're a gold digger. How dare you say that? you're gonna get a test. The banter begins, okay? The banter can begin in other ways as well, but the banter can begin if you go over the top with self-aggrandizing, saying things like, um, 
<laughs> I'm very well hung, I've got huge muscles, I've got bigger muscles than you, I'm more beautiful than you, self-aggrandizing stuff. And she's like, bullshit, you're not more good looking than me, I'm strong with you. So banter is uh, relaxed, fun, silly conversation that so many of you guys on the you know, academic type guys, you miss because you're not willing to go into the edgy zone and you really haven't even identified self-aggrandizing, self-deprecation, vulnerability, introducing yourself. There's no conversation or substance because you don't even know that these things exist. So then if, you're, if you give playful compliments uh, to the girl uh, over the top type of compliments like, um, and they really need to be playful, like you're a mermaid, you're an, oh, you're an angel, Oh, the trust fund girl is here. And you over exaggerate it. Raise your hands. Be playful with your voice. And she's like, "I'm, I'm you're, you're an asshole. You're a douchebag. You're horrible." And it will be playful banter, especially American terminology. That's how they talk about it. Um, and from that, you say, you just you can switch it and say, uh, "Of course, I'm joking." And that's empathy. That's like explain that I know how you feel. I'm joking. You've got a great sense of humor qualify her, I, I love talking to you because you have a good sense of humor, but pr I'm probably, you could then tease and say, I'm probably gonna get sick of you in a short amount of time, right? But let's go to the bar, get a drink, let's go dancing, or a different call to action could be, I'll leave you here to have girls night with your friends and I will you know, catch up with you and dance with you a little bit later. Or maybe I'll catch up with you and we can talk about going to an after party later. So this is starting to look like a healthy, type of conversation that includes banter and flirting. So I want you to start to see so many things that you're missing. Now, um, <clears throat> let's, let's go all around, okay, and, and talk about the edgy versions of these things. Edgy, in any of these listed conversational uh, mechanisms, edgy is something that as I said, is a little bit risky. You can be challenged, banter can begin, you can be told that you're crazy, but that's where the flirting begins. That's where banter begins. And it, it is a skill in and of itself, and that's what I have to do role plays with the students to ensure that their banter is okay. Generally, as long as you can do banter, you're gonna have a chance. If you can't do banter, you, you don't have a chance. And I have a lot of guys who come on my program and they say, Alex, I haven't had intimate relationships with any women for two or three years because they simply don't get it. And it sucks to see because these guys have a great job. They go to the gym, they take care of themselves. They, they are respectful to everybody that they know, but they don't have the, the intimacy that every guy is entitled to have in his life. They just don't have the intimacy and it sucks to see because they don't know that they are allowed to do these things, especially in you know, this this generation where woke culture and self-consciousness and we can't talk about certain things, but people st still do talk these ways and they are a bit edgy and they have a bit of banter, but it always needs to be win-win and socially acceptable, so on, so on. So let's go around here. With the positive stuff, he, this is basically your your content. This is These are your golden nuggets. Uh, to, to drive conversation, to make you interesting, to make you attractive to other people, to look like you have a sense of abundance, to drive conversation, that's gonna get your results. Now, it might be a little bit clumsy coming off at first, but people love somebody who's willing to take a risk and have fun. So, this is where it all begins. Now, <clears throat> positive, silly stuff, self-aggrandizing. A couple of examples of that before, and that would be I'm, I'm a genius, I'm talented, I'm very smart, I'm very wealthy, I'm super strong, I'm cooler than you. And this is very playful, not based in reality. And this is the easiest way to start flirting, self-aggrandizing. Playful compliments are like, um, here comes the supermodel, here comes the trust fund girl, here comes the Barbie, here comes the mermaid. The Barbie one's probably a bit of a risk, don't do that one, okay, cancel that one, don't say that one. Um, uh, you could say like, Australia's favorite ex-con, right? That would be a playful compliment, maybe even a tease, but et cetera. Role plays are really, really good. Things like we, we, would, we should be on the cover of a romance novel or we should quit our jobs and go to Thailand or we should rob a bank. Remember, emphasis and exaggeration to show that this is playful and, and just 
silly rather than genuine, okay? Everyone likes this, and if you can do this, it shows that you've got character and personality. Like I said, it will be clumsy to begin with, but you have to, you have to start somewhere. This is a growth process, and if you weren't doing this in grade school or high school, this is the place to start. Going down here, starting with the ones about you, that's self-deprecation. You can say things like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a computer geek, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a gym, I'm a gym nerd, I'm a gym junkie, I'm a tech geek, uh, I suck with women, I suck socially, I'm the worst dancer. Uh, and that would normally be followed up by something like um, vulnerability, but I, I, suck, I suck at dancing, but I'm gonna try anyway. Uh, I, I really suck. I'm the worst and the least charming man in the history of the world. Thank you for giving me a chance. Or that would be probably empathy. Thank you for giving me a chance. So um, positive to, uh, so silly to serious and combining the two together. Teasing, it, it's, very, it's very sensitive, but basically things like you should be canceled, I'm gonna put you in jail. Uh, um, I, I can't say anything on the internet. In person, we can talk about these things on live call, on individual calls, on mastermind, we can talk about these things, but we, we generally can't talk about it on the internet. But you can say to the girl, you're crazy, you're out of control, uh, my mum likes everyone, but she doesn't like you, she might not like you. Again, exaggerate this, um, just say, I would totally love to marry you, but I don't know if you'd be good in a relationship. These kind of playful word plays are good, but remember, they don't exist alone. Once you say one of these things, you wanna follow up with, you've got a great sense of humor, you're super down to earth, qualification, they have to go together. They can never literally live in isolation, otherwise you just destroy the process. The next one, and I, I actually think that positive serious, this quadrant, this is the most powerful quadrant. Uh, and that the guys completely miss. And what, what women love about men is being down to earth, clarity of thought, um, being in a position of sense of control, sense of power in his own life. So as I said, that, that phrase that a woman feels like she's being chosen by a man with choice. So if you can be mature and masculine and matter of fact and speak respectfully to a girl who wants to feel like she's being, being chosen or getting attention from a person with choice, She's gonna love this. She's gonna feel like, shit, this, this guy is taking me seriously. Whereas most guys are really too silly and too playful, there needs to be a lot of this positive stuff, positive serious stuff. So that would be introducing yourself. And one of the things that I get the students to say all the time is, um, hey, let me introduce myself. My name is Ken. I've got a financial company. I, I do investments. It's pretty fun. Uh, and you know, you can balance that out by saying, I do financial investments. It's, you know, it, it pays the bills, it gives me a good lifestyle, but I'm pretty much the most boring man in, in Australia, right? So you can then counterbalance it and then go back to a deeper introduction. After I do my funny stuff in the interaction, I will then say, hey, by the way, let me tell you more about my company. My name's Alex, I've got a creative media company. We work in a few places around the world. I love what I do. And by me filling in who I am and what I do, it makes me easy for the girl to understand. Back to this one, call to action. I did a blog about this one last time and that is when you say, hey, I'd like to dance with you later. I would like to get a drink with you later. I would like to take your phone number. I'd like you to meet my friends. I wanna meet your friends. It'd be great to get a drink. Um, we're having an after party. And basically, if you don't have a call to action, then of course your, your interaction is gonna be meaningless. No call to action, meaningless interaction. And the thing is, a lot of guys get into this problem where they are playing to not lose. The guy is playing to not lose. And you know, you have a whole lot of fun, but then you don't actually call to action or you know, you get the phone number, but you never call it just because you want to preserve your ego that you're actually good with girls when you're, you're still not quite there. You're still not quite truly abundant the way that we're talking about here. Qualification, there's a two hour seminar on this in Conversation Casanova and that is telling the girl why you think she stands out. Uh, a lot of sacrifices, she works hard, she's spiritual, she's down to earth, she's, she has clarity, um, she's disciplined, she's motivated to, to stop and point that out. Rapport is just getting to know one another, what do you believe in, what do you like? 
And that's missed a lot of the time. What do you believe in? What do you want to achieve? What, what does your future hold? And then don't forget compliments. And compliments, you, you know, when you do all of these things, you're pretty much risking rejection. So if you compliment a girl and you say, good enough, you're, you're super elegant, you're so lovely, you're so charming, you're so ambitious, all, all compliments have to be non-aesthetic. You can say you're stylish or you're athletic, but you can't say you have a great body or you have great hair. You can't say it that way. That's just a rule. And the girl will know that you're looking at her in an aesthetic way rather than a human way, right? But compliments are really important. But all of these things that I'm mentioning so far, if you say a compliment to a girl like, oh my goodness, you're super athletic, you're a vision, you're a vision, then other people are gonna think, or oh, she has the risk, she, she can not respond to that or say that you're trying too hard. You risk embarrassing yourself by doing that. But a strong person who, who feels uh, fine in society, they can say that and not get too stressed about it. So that's how that works, okay? Now, this quadrant here, the serious negatives, when you you know when I put those two words together, serious negative, these are things that have serious consequences. Uh, they can be confrontational. These are to be used sparingly, and they're often not used that that commonly in in social interactions. However, some of them do have their place, right? So, over demonstration of a fear of loss would be saying something like, "I really like talking to you," and if if you don't want to come and get a drink with me now, then we might not have another chance. And you know, you may be communicating that you're about to go and ask another girl to drink or dance because this girl's all over the place and you can't keep her attention. So another example of that might be like, hey, you know, I think I asked you to, to hang out a couple of times, but um, I, you know, uh, it's almost time for me to, to stop asking. That's when the girl can think, shit, I'm losing this guy, I better do something about that. Next one, vulnerability. And that does have a place as well. Like uh, on the program, on Four Week Natural, when we do these five week courses and, and check it out because we've got Melbourne, Croatia, New York, London, uh, and Helsinki coming up in 2022. It's gonna be a riot. Um, vulnerability, I want, to, I want students to use me and you conversation like, you are affecting me or I am affecting you. So you can say to the girl, like, you are making me nervous, you are putting me under pressure, or you have a crush on me or I have a crush on you. That always creates tests. Anyway, so vulnerability is like you're making me nervous. It took a lot of guts to come over here and talk to you. My friend said I would never have the, the confidence to come and say hello to you. So you're allowed to say these things to counterbalance you moving things forward like call to action right just it shows that you're aware of how you're affecting her that you're human that you're relatable empathy don't let me inter interrupt you i know how you feel i know it's girls night that that's a, a common part of conversational mechanism to to calm things down as a guy you do want to be moving things forward but you also want to be clearly and explicitly explaining that you're aware of how everybody feels around you you do want to have a win-win type of conversation, but you want to say you might be intimidated by the idea of going to an after party, but it'll be fun. Let me reassure you, that's empathy. Um, you know, I know how to help you guys to get home later, those kinds of things. So empathy is basically reassurance. Personal boundaries is if, you know, you say to the girl, hey, I want to offer you a drink. And she says, can you buy all of my friends a drink? then you would use a personal boundary and say, hey, I'm not the Salvation Army. Um, I'm not the Salvation Army, I'm not a charity. That's not how this works, kind of thing. So that's what a personal boundary is. But that can also be in a relationship. You say, hey, you know, I need some time alone to myself every week um, to do certain things, right? Um, hey, I don't appreciate the way that you're talking to me in a certain set of circumstances. And a strong person, not just a guy, but a girl as well, everybody needs to be able to say no and, and bring up things that they aren't very happy with um, that they want to share with other people. So, so yeah. And then of course challenges. Now challenges are very, very risky and they only really apply to maybe a relationship when you've been in a relationship for a while. And that might be saying things like, 
hey friend or hey girlfriend, I think that you are letting yourself down. You know, I think that you know you made an agreement with yourself not to drink so much, and you're letting yourself down on that thing that you agreed not to to do as much of. So that one, you need quite a lot of rapport to do that. So these are all edgy. Over the top stuff is if you really have a lot of rapport with somebody and then you can say things like, oh my, you know, then you can be really aggressive with your language. If you have a lot of rapport, a long conversation, then you can say things like, oh my God, you can't resist me, right? That'd be positive silly. Oh my God, you can't resist me or oh my God, you're irresistible. A, a tease can be, oh my God, <laughs> you're, you're so fat, right? It's clearly a tease, but it's done over the top. It's not normally socially acceptable, but when you have a lot of rapport, a lot of connection, a lot of time spent together, you can make things more exciting whoop, by doing that. You can also give more meaningful, powerful compliments. You can make bigger requests like, hey, let's get married. Hey, let's move in together. Um, you can introduce yourself. You can share deeper things about yourself. So with rapport, you need to then turn up to over the top. And sometimes you can be extreme just for the shock value, but I'm not gonna go into this. I've heard of some pickup artists saying extremely confrontational sexual things, and it does have this incredibly powerful shock effect, but it's not very win-win. It shocks the other person, and the person saying it has a sense of control uh, at the expense of the other person. So generally, we don't wanna go extreme. So you get a pretty good idea of this. and. It's up to you to make your own notes uh, on these things that are going on around here. And in Conversation Casanova, this full program with nine modules, it talks about um, all of these in detail. And I wrote down like 400 and something pick up lines, topics that are edgy that you can use as golden content to make your conversations more interesting. And that's the idea, right? We as you know, dating coaches and pickup artists, we know them, these funny phrases like cancel culture and you should be in jail, these edgy things that are always gonna make things funny, we know them and it, we just have a, a library of these things for you to use and to know how to use properly in combination with other things as well. So that's that. Now on this other side of the board here, we have a proper role play. I'm gonna move the camera, we're gonna get a little intimate here. <clears throat> and I'm gonna show you how the stack might work. All right, so we're set up, two cameras here. Here's the stack, here's how pickup, cold approach pickup should and normally does look. And I'm not, this is not something that I have just dreamt up and I'm presenting to you, I'm just telling you what I've observed over 16 years of coaching and the general patterns that happen when a guy who doesn't know a girl approaches a girl and wants to make it a fun and interesting conversation rather than a boring conversation that doesn't have any attraction involved. So here's generally how it looks, right? So you, you would go up and you would greet and use some empathy. You would say something like, Hey, sorry to interrupt, are you waiting for a drink? You know, imagine you're waiting next to a girl at a bar. Then some safe comments, some, some, some norm, normality. Being normal obviously is good because if you're abnormal, you're gonna be weird and come across the wrong way. Um, and then you might wanna say something edgy, right? That's what makes the interaction interesting and makes it rather, makes it, flirting rather than just platonic and nothing happening in the interaction. A lot of guys, they get stuck in the friend zone because they can talk to girls, but they can't actually make it interesting because they lack creativity or they're not coached by somebody like me. So then you might say something silly or edgy, okay? Um, <laughs> so you could say, you could walk up and say to, to the girl like, hey, um, how's your evening going? Are you waiting for drinks? Uh, are you scaring the shit out of men with, a, with, your, with your scary face? And the girl's like, what, right? That's what we call the crack, that's when she actually opens up. Uh, one, one safer thing that I might say, still edgy, but I might say, uh, are guys, do guys in your country buy you drinks or are you scaring them all away? That might be a safer way to say the same thing. Some guys might go up directly and say, uh, something edgy and say, hey, what's going on? I'm, uh, I just got out of jail. I, I had a really great career in crime. I'm out of jail and it's time to get drunk. What's your name? Then do the greeting. What's your name? Where are you from? 
So there needs to be something edgy in there. It can be positive, it can be, can be a negative, silly or serious. You might even walk up and say something like, oh my goodness, you are, you're, you're very beautiful tonight. You look incredible and that would be a compliment. And it's a bit over the top to say, oh my God, you're incredibly beautiful. You're elegant, you have presence. That's a bit over the top, but it's definitely risky to say something like that. The point is, after you do this stuff, you're gonna get the test and the test is ideal. If you don't say something silly, you're not gonna get the test, and you're gonna go in a different direction, which is the boring direction. You're gonna just go, hey, where are you from? What are you doing? I'm here with my friends. Oh, cool, do you work in the city? I work in the city. Do you travel much? Do you like these drinks? Blah, blah, blah. And there's gonna be no test. You need to take the complexity up one level, maybe say something edgy like, uh, don't worry, I, I won a boxing match tonight, so if you need me to save your life and, and make everything better for you, I'm, I'm the man, just, you know, I've got, I've got muscles, yeah. And the girl's gonna say, oh my God, you, you think that's funny, you're an idiot. Or if you do something silly negative, like I said, like you're, you're scaring all the guys away, I would, <laughs> that's what I say, um, then she would test you and say something like, are you saying that I look scary? Are you saying that I look aggressive? You, you would get that test. If you said you're beautiful um, with a positive serious, her test might be, oh my God, you said that to all the girls? And then if you said something serious like the vulnerability, uh, if you said something serious negative like, um, hey, it took me, I was so scared to come up here and talk to you because you look very uh, intimidating. The girl might test you by almost pitying you, pitying you. Now. You're gonna get the test. Sometimes the test can only, can simply be the girl just blank face, not interested in you, like, like a scary face. And this throws everybody off, right? So once you get the test, then you need to respond with something funny and silly as well, okay? So say for example, positive silly, if you walk up and you say, don't worry, I was, uh, <laughs> I'm the next coming of Christ. Um, so if you need a drink, I can just manifest it out of water. And the girl's like, you're full of, you're full of shit, you're not funny. And you say, <laughs> how, how would you know uh, you were born of the Virgin Mary? Something, something equally as ridiculous? How would you know? Uh, you're in the presence of God, I'll be the judge of that. And the girl will probably test you again, roll her eyes, but you've set up a precedent where you didn't lose the test, you could stand up for yourself in the test and you don't even need to conquer anything, you just need to kind of pass that hurdle. And my examples here are not even that funny, but if you can get past that, then you do this massive kind of change up. You, you stop being silly and then you crisscross and you go serious, okay? So then you say, hey, you've got a great sense of humor, I'm being an idiot, I'm being self-aggrandizing, I'm just talking smack. It's the weekend, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex, I have a creative media company, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you were to do something like a tease, hey, are, are you scaring the guys away with your, your aggressive, that aggressive look on your face? I like it, but I, I see that it's a very powerful tool that you can use, it's breaking men's hearts. And the girl is like, I don't have an aggressive face. I'm like, you do, you do, it's awesome. Teach it to me so I can like walk home safely and not be attacked by, uh, romantic homosexual men who want a piece of me. I'm using, trying to be very politically correct for the internet. So you respond to it, you deal with it, and you say, hey, you've got a good sense of humor, I like your banter, my name is Alex or John or whatever it's gonna be. If you do the beautiful thing and she says, uh, you're, you're, super, you're super beautiful, I really am nervous to come and talk to you. And she's like, oh, you don't need to be. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm not nervous anymore. She tests you, oh, I'm not nervous anymore. Um, I, I see you for the beauty on the inside and that's not intimidating at all. So another silly, illogical response, then initiate the handshake, my name is, I'm from here, where are you from, what are you doing? And then these things follow. So as you said, as I showed you in those examples, then you would compliment. You've got a great sense of humor, you can take a joke, you're open-minded, it's so charming to talk to you. So make it individually about her. I know that I'm coming on strong empathy. I, I, maybe I'm coming on strong, maybe this is over the top. Um, sorry to overwhelm you, sorry to be crazy, it's the weekend. And then 
sometime soon, there has to be some kind of call to action. And that can be as simple as, why don't we dance later? Why don't we drink later? Why don't I introduce you to my friends? Or why don't your friends meet my friends? They're really nice, my friend is single. So you're, you're putting some direction into the conversation rather than just hoping for the best. You have to put some direction. Now, with the call to action, down here we go into the flirting loop. She might say, oh, I don't know. And you say, no, you win the prize. You win the prize of getting to speak to my friends because you guys are uh, hellish or angelic or geniuses or deplorable. It doesn't matter what you use. Then we go into banter, flirting loop, okay? And that's what drives good conversation. That's what guys who get this know compared to guys who don't get this don't know, right? And then, then it's kind of like call to action. I'll add this one here. Rapport, if this is the pen that works, rapport. So you may be you know, telling your story uh, and asking about her story. And then as you share yourself, you can self-deprecate. And as she shares herself, you can tease. As you share yourself, you can self-aggrandize. As she shares herself, you can go into role plays, exaggerated compliments, and things like that. And then the interaction with different calls to action, let's drink, let's dance, let's hang out, let's date there's going to be that back and forth. And the girl is allowed to go at her own pace, obviously, uh, go at her own pace and tell you to slow down and, and not yet and those kinds of things. But you can continue to playfully call to action, ask for what's next. And it's, it, you know, I'm a dating coach, so I really love to see the process of two people opening up to each other, getting to know one another, falling in love, finding mutual interest, overcoming their initial skepticisms towards one another to form these fun win-win relationships that in this day and age is so hard because of political awareness, political correctness, social awareness, things like that. Because in the dating game, it's not like the harder you work, the better you're uh, entitled to. It's a very simple thing. If you can take a bit of a risk, then you're gonna be a fun guy, but a lot of guys can't take risks. And so they live their life extremely frustrated, reverting to things like porn and prostitution and alcohol and gambling, rather than going and having more fun, uh, having more uh, genuine fun with girls that they could meet. So this is what we do. I'm sharing that with you today on this vlog. Right, this is what I teach on Four Week Natural. Look on www.fourweeknatural.com because I do live programs all over the world and they're spectacular. You plus four, five, six, seven other guys partying around, having new experiences, uh, discovering your social possibilities, right? becoming empowered whereas you were hopeless before. That's what live coaching is. And it's immersive, so it's completely committed for five weekends with me and the, and the other guys that you'll do it with. Summer is coming up, so have a look at those programs. And again, I show you what this is, great, but can you do it and can you do it well and what feedback do you need? So that's how this works, right? I can show you what it is, but then to get it right, you can do as much as you can on your own, but come and do it with me in person. You'll never need to think about this ever again. So check it out. Uh, if you want the online version of this, this Conversation Casanova, which is linked somewhere. And I hope that this has been extremely illuminating. Now, you know, I will obviously monitor all the comments in this video. So any questions about any of this and the parts where you're falling down or the parts that you think that you're good at, ask me. If you think that you've learned something from this, which I'm sure you have, because no other dating coach talks about this this way with this much depth, give it a thumbs up. Click it, hit it, smash it. And uh, now that I've released this, I can talk about all of the gameplay within this, the examples, the, the list of edgy statements, the combinations that we can use to help your game be better now that you know I've got some stability after we've launched Conversation Casanova. Can't wait to see you on live programs. Been a long one. I love going in depth. I think in depth is better. And I'll see you on the next blog.